there wasn't much thinking or training in the real estate business back then about how to really run it as a business path. Nowadays, there's a lot of that. The industry has definitely matured. So it's more competitive, but there's also a lot more tools nowadays too. Uh, back then, you know, it was, it was, it was kind of much, much less mature industry. And I remember one of the funny things uh, is, is that uh, realtors were so paranoid about the internet and mm. they thought that AT&T, if you can believe this, AT&T was going to start their own MLS. And back then, uh, you know, uh, realtors really were very protective of that MLS data. And uh, now we've seen that change. So a lot has changed in the, in the way the market. Yeah, it's funny. Everyone was paranoid about the, yeah. the MLS going public. Right. And then when it is public now, it, it, it hasn't seemed to be the crisis. It's almost like Y2K when everybody right. thought, you know, the world was going to end. Uh, the world hasn't ended. Uh, the commissions haven't. Uh, plummeted. Uh, that was the big prediction. Once the once the MLS was public, then there would be no need for realtors, and uh, and the commissions would then plummet. So, what do you have the what, what do you think? You know, what do you think about that? It's just is it always going to be like that? The yeah, more and more disruptive technologies that come out. Everybody is always fearful of disruptive technology. Of course, all, all this stuff is never as worrisome as it seems to be. It does require us to adapt. Um, you know, in any storm, uh, the trees still standing after the storm are the ones that are flexible, that bend, that bend with the wind, that can adapt. Um, and the ones that get knocked down are the ones who are, that, re that refuse to bend, right? Mm. And so we need to adapt to things. Now, I would say that the uh, public, uh, well, I guess the, the sort of the public access to the, what is basically the MLS in one form or another nowadays has mostly helped listing agents more than buyer's agents. Uh, but um, it can help either side of that equation. I was a listing agent. I'm still a fan of being a listing agent. And, um, uh, but, but yeah, you know, the industry is still here. Uh, everybody has realized that a house or any kind of property for that matter is not a commodity like an airline ticket or a stock or a bond. Uh, it's a complicated asset. Uh, you know, two houses right next door to each other can be very different. And you need an actual person, an actual human who has experience, brains to help guide uh, that uh, buyer or seller through that process. So uh, the industry has not gone away. I will tell you though, um, I read an article a couple of years ago about something I think really could be a, a major disruptor if it happens. Let's talk about this. Yeah, yeah. So uh, of course, the, the public pretty much has access to the data now. The data is not protected anymore like it right. used to be in the old days. Okay, the MLS was like this this club, okay? Right. And, and, and the national- You needed a realtor to get it. Right, right. And the National Association of Realtors was very protective of that. Well, the one part that the realtors still have control of is access, access to the actual property, right? Uh, they have the lockbox key. Mm, temporarily. I mean, now on rentals, I don't know about your rentals, but a lot of my rentals now are going to, um, you know, electronic lockboxes and uh, cameras because cameras are so cheap. You can see who's yeah. in and out of the house. Right, right. Um, by the way, I'd love to hear more about exactly how you're executing on that because I, I know some of our clients are using that. They're using the electronic locks or lock boxes and, uh, you know, where people can use, put an app on their phone, get access and so forth uh, for a vacant rental. But when it's an occupied house, it's still the real estate agent that's really- When it's an occupied house, yeah. yeah. Today, when it's an occupied house. But my opinion is that in the future, cameras are so cheap that people will have 75 cameras per house, mm -hmm. you know? So even if it's an occupied house and you go out and take your dog for a walk or you go get some coffee, you're going to know everything and anything of what someone's doing in your house and it's going to be recorded. 
Look, I mean, I don't know what's going to happen, but what you're referring to is kind of the concept of Amazon Key, right? Yes. That's yes the Amazon indeed. Key program mm -hmm. yeah. where, uh, you know, you can authorize the delivery person to go inside your house and leave your packages, right? Correct. And so, so that's all a possibility. We'll see how it goes. But the one I was specifically referring to is that I remember reading an article that Zillow was uh, trying to do a deal with Uber uh, to provide lockbox keys to Uber drivers. Now, if you think about it, granted that Uber driver probably doesn't have a real estate license, but you know what? They are screened to one extent or another, and um, uh, they're they're somewhat vetted. Uh, and you know, if they if you could go see houses with an Uber, that could be a game changer. That, that's interesting. Let's think about this, guys. So everybody, I just want to, everyone to stop and think about this. If you're going to put your life in an Uber of a random person, right? Again, you're talking about a random person. Why wouldn't you let that same random person in your house? If he's not going to kill you while you're in his car, he's probably not going to kill you, you know, while he's in your house. It's, it's a fascinating, fascinating uh, concept there. Hmm. It, it, if, if the access to the property is not controlled by the real estate agent, that is, I think, legitimate disintermediation. And I think the industry ought to be concerned about that. Who knows if it'll ever happen, but it's something to th definitely think about, right? Something to think about. So, yeah. so in, in most other countries, Right, you look through Europe, Australia, New Zealand, a lot of these other countries where real estate is legitimate commerce that buys and sells. Um, the buyers uh, pay the broker, right, um, just like they would pay a lawyer, right. Mm -hmm. yep. And the average commission uh, outside of North America is a full percentage less. Uh, like they say the average commission and I'm going to round is, is like 1.5 everywhere else outside of North America, but in North America, it's average 2.65. And, and the reason that they say, and this, this is all based on articles is because that uh, the buyers are paying the agent direct themselves and thereby they're negotiating it and saying, Hey, this is, you're only worth one and a half. Um, and that's going to happen where it could very possibly happen, especially if the agent doesn't have to show many houses and they act just like a lawyer acts. So what, what, what are your thoughts on that, Jason? Uh, my thoughts are, we'll see. <laughs> you know it's it's kind of anybody's guess where this is going to go. Mm. I used to say that um, the real estate industry, as much as everybody talked about change and disruption, I used to say when I, I, I used to teach uh, seminars to agents on general success, but also a lot on direct mail and, uh, and stuff like that and farming. And uh, it, it was like this big giant marshmallow. You know, you can take your fist, you can swing it, you can hit the marshmallow and you pull your fist back and the marshmallow, it just returns to the way it was. Right. And that's kind of mm -hmm. how the industry was. And uh, you know, we'll see, man. I don't know. 